Customer service used to mean a clichéd big smile, a yes sir or madam, and a customer is always right attitude. Today, well, more often than not, it means an online automated chat box, which leads you to a frequently asked questions page, then back to the automated chatbot again, who still can't find the answer to your query, and repeat until you turn to dust, or throw your computer out the window. A study by the professional services giant PwC focusing on customer experience shows that 59% of customers globally felt brands are so short-sighted about automation that they've lost touch with the human element of building that great customer experience. So how can you provide good old-fashioned customer service in a brand new, increasingly digital world? We asked David Liu, CEO of the online payments provider Truvo. The reality is that you know, um, the technology definitely have come a long way, okay. But you know, at the end of the day, what we find is that, for example, in, in, you know, in for customer service, okay, a lot of the times you know, people do want to talk to the human because you know, the problems are always more complex than you know, just simple questions. If you, you know, that um, like a canned messages, and also you know, at the end of the day, you know, um, we do business with people, not with technology. So David, just to, when you're talking about chatbots, you mean the type of sort of those boxes that pop up and say, hi, how can you help? You type your message in here. And uh, if you're me, it repeatedly tells you that uh, it doesn't understand your query. Is that what we're talking about on a website? <laughs> Some of the more primitive ones are like that, or else, you know, for example, you know, in in certain help sections and things like that, you know, you could type in questions and then you know it, it will guide you through to find answers. Okay, um, you know, you know, they are they they definitely have come a long way, but they're still not at the standard where you know a human could quite easily understand and give you the right answers there and then. And are there particular sectors where you found people were even more keen to speak to a real human than others? You know, for example, you know. In some of the things that you deal with, with, with personal finance and things like that, were, were, were there exactly. sector by sector breakdowns where people were even keener to speak to a real human? When it comes to money, okay, it, it's very personal, and uh, you know, you know, and it's very important to to most people to be able to speak to a human. That's really critical because you, know, you are anxious about the money and you want to get answers. And that that what, what that's what we found that you know that's why you know humans are really really the winner right now. Isn't the slightly cold hard truth though that this is all about cost and that this is a much much cheaper way for these companies to run these services and and that impacts the bottom line and they would have to make savings elsewhere if they weren't making savings doing this. Definitely, you know, you know cost has a significant impact on and and also be able to service a lot of people at the same time as we scale and as we get substantially a lot more customers you now we we have to try to find ways to automate a lot of things but you know at the same time i think that you know, we have to find different ways whereby you know a human can help and where's other areas where a machine is actually really good you know, but you know if you're looking for answers and for help a lot of times the human is way better yeah but also there are other times i guess where you know, often if the call center perhaps isn't in the country where the person's making the call from, that there are lots of downsides to to big call centers too, aren't there? That you can be waiting on the line for a really long time, which is extremely frustrating. It would be very expensive to call some of these lines. They're not perfect in, in their own right right now either, are they? I don't think there is really like a hundred percent perfect solution in in both whether it's machine or else human. One has to pick. You know, which areas are best served by human or machine or the AI. The reality is that different people have different preferences. Some people want to just look up FAQs and find the answers themselves, while others, you know, they want to speak to someone human. And I think you have to provide all those different means. In your eyes, David, what does a, a better system, if not a perfect system, look like? Because the customer service element of it is going to have to be so good, isn't it, to match out that cost problem that we talked about? What, what could that system look like? Everyone is making a lot of progress in AI and big data, and, and there's a lot of learning that's going on with machines, you know, with AI. But right as we speak now, you know, it's still not quite there, but we are, we are getting there. Um, at the end of the day, you know, it's all about the customer service. You know, if you can provide the right answers, uh, and as quickly as possible, then that's a winner. You know, it doesn't really matter how you provide the service as long as you know the person who wants who needs the answer is getting it at the right time. David Liu of Truvo there. Now